Hello, internet friends. In this video, I am reverse engineering what I have completed so far. So, uh, hi, if you're new to the channel, my name's Josh. I'm building a RV-14 or attempting to build a Vans RV-14. It's an airplane, if you couldn't tell that from the look of all the parts on the table there, or uh, this being filmed in a hangar, or the description of the channel. So anyway, uh, I moved to the hangar, and now I'm trying to figure out why I'm a few pages ahead in the plans, and some parts of the plans haven't been completed. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to skip to the short version, which is... After taking it apart and putting it back together, I realized right here, oh, it's because I need to build the fuel system right now. So because I've chosen to use a different fuel system than the plans, uh, or a, uh, so what I'm <coughs> choosing to do is an electronic ignition, right? And so that has a different fuel pump from the plans. Because as a different fuel pump from the plans, I need to design a mount uh, for the fuel pump. And I'm using a different fuel valve, which means I'm going to have to build different fuel lines than the plans specify. Um, and so a good time to do that is now, before I have a bunch of skins on and have to crawl over them, or under them, or above them, or somehow <laughs> get over them. And so what I was too lazy to just pause right there if you want to pause a few seconds ago when I zoomed in on the um, fuel valve right there. Uh, the bracket that I made, um, I made it before I got the banjo valve for the fuel valve. Apparently this is the first time I've put that back together. And so w the very edge of the lip was touching the banjo valve and obviously that's bad because as the airplane flies and vibrates that's going to cut right through. So. I need to just file a notch into this bracket so that way it's not touching the banjo valve at all and I won't have to worry about uh, you know cutting through the fuel valve which would be bad because it would spray fuel all over my interior which in case you don't know anything about planes spraying fuel all over the interior is bad it could lead to uh, fire and or death or other bad things Sorry, I was distracted by, uh, apparently I need a tighter belt. Okay, so take a look at this, uh, and this is what the notch looks like that I filed in there, so now I can be sure I'm not going to cut a hole in that valve just by flying a plane, and uh, won't have fuel spray in the cockpit and cause me to die. So, okay, um, next up is obviously that I have this fuel valve in the right or in a configuration, I don't know if this is the final configuration, then I have to start playing around with figuring out how the fuel lines are going to work. So that means let's get out the uh, flaring tool and let's figure out how that works. And now this is the part where when you build a plane you learn a lot of new things because I get this tool out and apparently I don't point the camera at it, yay me. Uh, and yeah, guess what? You can totally ro rotate the tool into uh, the right position for the size tubing that you have. Uh, and my first thought is like, oh, it's not in the right position. I need to take it completely apart and so I can rotate it into the right position and put it back together. And no, it turns out if the screws are just a little too tight, uh, just loosen them just a tiny bit and it rotates by itself. So. But, you know, that's how you learn. When you take something completely apart and put it back together again, uh, you learn how it works. So that is the story of how you build a plane. You just take it apart 800 times and put it back together again, and then you know how everything works. All right, and I'm going to apologize for the crappy audio because I just realized that I did not plug my microphone in. I also need to apologize to the good folks at Hisense or whatever the company is that built that TV because I previously said that it was a stupid design and it has no buttons, but I realized today after not being tired and going to the hangar and using it that it is a genius design because there is one button on the very bottom of the TV where the light is. Uh, and if you push that button, you can not only power it on, but you can also switch the inputs. So in my opinion, it's actually an idiot-proof genius design. 
uh, I need to say sorry to the Koreans or whoever whoever Hisense is because uh, my stupid American self is like if it's not a three inch square button uh, I don't it doesn't exist to me apparently I need to go put my grandpa pants on and my spectacles so anyway if you want to come chat RVs and learn about how to take your airplane apart 100 times and put it back together, come join our Slack group. The link is in the description, and we will see you there.